Welcome everyone, welcome to the midway of the Collective Trauma Online Summit. And to our live event today, Global Social Witnessing of Worldwide Uncertainty. My name is Kosha Joubert and you may recognize me as one of the hosts of the summit. Also, I serve as the CEO of the Pocket Project, which is the non-for-profit organization in the field of Thomas Hubel. And in the Pocket Project, we regularly practice global social witnessing as an invitation to bring our embodied present and compassionate awareness to what is happening in the world and how this lands within us. So I invite you and I will invite you also at the end of today to continue the practice that you're going through today, if you would like so. And I'm really excited today to have this event with Thomas, who will introduce us to the practice and then will help us to attune to the situation that we all find ourselves in, in different ways our relationship to the worldwide increasing levels of uncertainty that we face. So we're speaking about a whole array of crises here, the climate crisis, the increasing streams of forced migration, refugees around the planet, poverty rates, um, Wars, loss of bi biodiversity, just to name a few. So in the face of these rising pressures, how can we respond? Many of us feel overwhelmed, turn away. We might feel increased anxiety, but we might also feel numb because there is so much to address. We might also be at the heart of one of the hot traumas in the world. So there's this whole bandwidth of possibility. 
And today, Thomas will really invite us to take wherever we are as the meaningful place to be for us and the starting point for our contribution and being part of the evolutionary flow in the world. Through this global social witnessing practice today, we will have an experience of how coming together as a community, coming together as a collective body, increases our capacity to host both ourselves and the world. So just a few short housekeeping recommendations for all of us before we get started. Closed captions are available for this event. And for those of us joining us on Zoom with a computer, you can turn on closed captions by clicking the live transcript CC button found at the bottom of your Zoom window. If you don't see it, click on more and then you'll find the CC button there. If you're joining us on Zoom with your mobile device, closed captions should automatically appear. And if not, you can tap settings, then tap meeting, and then you can toggle closed captions to on. Zoom users can submit a written question at any time by clicking on the Q&A button, again found at the bottom of your Zoom window. And if you don't see it, select more and you'll find the Q&A button there. If you're finding us on YouTube today, the closed captions cannot be turned off. And if you have technical issues or questions, please email summit at thomashubelonline.com. So we're really delighted to be here with all of you for this important topic. And we'll go on a journey together where Thomas will start by introducing us to global social witnessing as a practice. Then invite us together to deepen our individual and collective presence in this moment so that we can come together more as a sensitive body. And then Thomas will invite us to meet ourselves and the world more deeply in this place where we meet the energy of worldwide uncertainty. After that, Thomas will invite us to write fluidly about the experience that we're really encountering. So you might want to get a pen and paper if you can to support you. And then we'll have a phase where some of us can come online and share more deeply about our experience, but also through each of us coming online, we become able to witness a part of our global nervous system. And that will complete our call. There'll be a space for a final collection of voices in the chat and some announcements about how we will move forward. And then we'll complete with a wonderful poem by Kim Rosen. So I wish us all a deepening and nourishing session and thank you, Thomas, for being here with us today and leading us through this event. Over to you. Well, thank you, Kosha. A beautiful introduction. Yes, so today we want to um, explore a bit the social technology or as kind of a social healing technology of global social witnessing. And... We also want to explore in ourselves how this, the current world situation meet us, how, how are we dealing with or not dealing with, or what are our kind of coping mechanisms and strategies to deal with the current uncertainty around multiple topics that are global. 
and affect us more and more. So what's what's our internal process? And then we will also listen to some voices as Kosha said already and, and be a witnessing body. And I wanna just a few minutes to talk about the essentials of global social witnessing that we know what that means. Maybe you hear this for the first time. So um, <clears throat> many years ago, when I um, was a deepening the exploration and the study of collective trauma, it was very clear to me that the inversion of collective trauma is the inability in our social structures and bodies to witness the, the events and experiences that are being produced within that social body. So when we say trauma creates either a very reactive, hyperactivated, um, very stress exaggerated trigger impulse. So that's one set of symptoms. Or trauma shows up when we are triggered as distance as numbness, as disengagement, as detachment. And, and so we are not really engaged and participating. So either it's overly triggered, overly emotional, or it's, it's exactly the opposite. And both are triggered parts of us. Both are parts of us that cannot really participate and contribute according to our highest intelligence. So that's why we began to say, okay, it's not about if we are able to feel everything. That's not why we put global social witnessing in place as a practice, but it is about, first of all, that I become aware of what's actually going on in me when certain things happen in society, in the world, when I read news, when I hear from my neighbors, what, what actually is going on in me? Am I aware of my physical, emotional, rational, relational sensations and processes? And can I find out a little bit more about where I stop to be a witness of and in the process of my society, my life. And that it's not a good or a bad thing that that happens. It's a very important process to become aware of. It's kind of a social contemplation. It's a social meditation. It's an engagement meditation. And so global social witnessing is also something that we do often in groups like today, even if through the current webinar function, we can't, um, we can see each other, but we can, um, we are a group, an international group of people that is tuning in today to this space. So we are a collective presencing body together. Everybody who is listening right now is also bringing awareness, sensing, relating, inner awareness to the table. And so a global social witnessing community is a collective space, which witnesses or practices with a certain topic that happens, as Kosha said at the beginning in the pocket project, we there are multiple regular spaces of global social witnessing where we can bring a topic like something that goes on in a certain part of the world, a crisis that just happened, like a strong incident that happened in a society. And, and we begin to practice our social awareness because since we are all very informed through the very technology that we are using right now or through mobile phones and news feeds and news feeds being there five minutes sometimes after something happened on our phones or kind of 
tech devices, we are actually bombarded by um, information and often traumatic information that we consume. And this might lead to the fact that we think that we are globally informed, but we are not globally informed. We are globally informed. So it doesn't go all the way in. And of course, there are all kinds of protection mechanisms in place why that's the case. But the global compassion and the global openness, the global sensing, the global togetherness and intimacy is also often not happening, which in, in many situations also creates like a global indifference. Or we react because we are emotionally very triggered, but then we overreact sometimes and we are not anymore in tune what's really needed. So bottom line is global social witnessing is a collective space as we create it right now. And what we want is not to look at how should I be in relation to anything that's happening in the world, but how is it? Not how should it be, how is it? How, what's my relationship to global warming? How does global warming and climate change and the climate impact relate to me? How do various conflicts, how do challenged democracies, how does more and more polarization, more and more violent conflicts, how does that relate to me? Who am I in relationship to that? And that leads me to the second part before we do some experiment, experiential work. Um, the second part is that um, there is a tendency in a collectively traumatized society that the problem we want to fix is out there. There is also a tendency sometimes in us to see society as everywhere around us. This is society. Or when we go to nature, nature is around us versus nature is through us. I am also nature. I am biosphere. My body is biosphere. It's not the biosphere, all the trees in the forest and the animals and the good air. And it's not that nature is around me, the very looking at nature is nature. The very sensing of nature is nature. There is nothing but nature. But that's not always how we feel life. And that's also not always how we think life. And that leads to the fact that we might equally feel, think, and act as if the problems we have to solve are merely external problems. They need to be fixed outside. And we might think that the feelings that come up in us according to these external problems are a problem. Because of my climate anxiety, I am not really able to do something meaningful. Because of my my anxiety, I am not able to um, become part of a meaningful project in the world in order to tackle X, Y, Z. So it seems like that, or because of my numbness, I am whatever. And today we want to look at that process and say, no, 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 no. The things that come up in us, the internal experience is as much climate change as the external CO2 production. They are inherently interdependent. These are not two things. This is one thing. It's not once I will be done with my fear, I will be a better contributor to the world. No. Me becoming aware that instead of suppressing my inner experience, 
bringing my inner experience more into my own awareness and hopefully also into some collective healing spaces like we created here today and in other places, that those healing spaces are digesting the very inner thousands of years accumulated stuff that lives in us for us to grow inside and outside, for us to develop more solutions that help us to tackle climate change and for us to create the inner fluidity and fitness to move as a global society. And both are one process, not two. It's not my inner process blocks me. No, we need to detox those fears and those permafrosts because they are part of the root cause of what, we, what looks like an external issue that we have. And that's why the global social witnessing work is important because it's, it's a work that stays connected to the societal process. It's connected to what's happening in the world. Why? because I believe we are local and global citizens. We have a local and a global response ability, a local and global ability to respond. We are part of a local and a global immune system. And everybody's attention everybody's responsiveness, everybody's action, and everybody's participation is needed for us to work together as a team, as a global team, to be able to bring forth the next level of our species evolution. And so global intimacy is the capacity to sense, not only to know and talk about and think about, to know from deeply within that we are all connected as a data network, to know from deeply within what's happening in this world. There's a much deeper knowing. And I think global social witnessing can, can show us the edge of that knowing where our conscious experience of the world ends and step by step through compassion and through love and through the respect that whatever we see is beautiful and whatever we don't see is beautiful because what we don't see is something that we can bring back and turn into seeing through respecting the absence the numbness the looking away, the shutting down. All of these are very important functions and not problems. They were very needed at a certain time in our life. And that's why for today, we want to do two things. We want to look at and explore deeply within ourselves um, how, who are we as local and global citizens who are we in relationship to this, to the complexity in our world, to the pressing issues in our world? How do we relate, as we said, to a more and more obvious climate change and climate impact that threatens the very base of our life? Who am I in when I allow myself to feel that? Who am I in relationship? And it's not that I should feel X, Y, Z. We are not looking at should. We are only looking at what actually becomes apparent when we do that. How do we relate to the beginning, or not the beginning, the already existing global displacement and a much stronger uh, displacement wave and the climate migration? that has already begun. And who am I in relationship to that? 
And maybe with some of the topics, it's so big that I don't feel much. Then that's who I am in relationship to that. Some of it might scare me. Some of it might uh, bring up all kinds of other emotions, grief, or also the loss of biodiversity. And more, more and more rapid loss of biodiversity, what's, what's coming up in me? Fragmentation and very strong polarization that we have seen also through COVID, our societal capacity to deal with a strong stress factor led to a lot of fragmentation, polarization. Of course, we see ongoing racism we see ongoing anti-Semitism, we see ongoing gender violence. So there are many, many topics that are going on that are happening here as we speak. So who am I in relationship to some of those? And how am I living in a world where many structures are changing and many identity structures that we are used to are falling slowly apart because they don't make sense anymore. We became a global village where certain structures are outdated and others are needed. And some of them are falling apart. Others are maybe not yet visible. So who am I when certain things that I kind of took as normal or for granted are shaking, dropping away? What's my relationship to a rapidly changing world? And so that's what we want to explore first in an individual. We started already to explore that uh, as an individual contemplation. I will take us now through a short meditation and then we will have some journaling time that you with yourself can reflect a bit and see a bit, make a time also as a community to look at what's, um, how does all of that live in me and how do I find a relationship to the various topics and many topics that I, I didn't mention because some of us that are tuning in, living in hot trauma areas, some of us living in uh, trauma areas where we digest over one, two, three generations, the hurt that has happened. And so we, we want to be mindful of all of it. Okay, and then also see how we deal with our inner feelings, how we deal with uncertainty and how maybe we can turn uncertainty into resilience, into creativity, into a sense of agency, into a sense of contribution without overriding or just neglecting what's, what's deeper within us. And through that process to see that the external circumstances and the internal experience are inherently interwoven. There's not a disturbance, there's not a disconnect between those, they belong together. So what billions of people detox inside is part of the external circumstance, they belong together. And they help us, the external circumstances help us to clear and clean and integrate our past so that we are more able to interact with each other and with the world. Great, so maybe let's um, take a moment just to reflect a bit on a short introduction. And let's maybe drop into our bodies. Our bodies are an important um, part of our inner work. Our bodies are super intelligent biocomputers designed over a long period of time. So refined 
and refined and refined. Maybe if you take a breath and you just drop into your body and you check in with when I speak about some of the current events and situations on the planet, how what's how do you feel physically? First, how does your body respond to what you heard? Is your body open? Is your body a bit tense? Is your body very lively, energized? Is your body, are the body sensations less accessible? I just notice without that it should be in a certain way or without that it's good when it's X and it's not so good when it's Y. We let that go so that we can really create intimacy with our inner state. And so there's my physical body, my physical sensations and my current stress level. There's also my emotional experience. What's your emotional experience right now? There's also your relational experience, how much you feel connected to the current state of situation in your community, in your in the society or culture you're part of, and also where global events are going, so different circles maybe of engagement or awareness that you have. Sometimes the global context is very much in the background. Sometimes we fluctuate in our life between different radiuses of awareness. Sometimes we feel also isolated, more disconnected because we get overwhelmed and we want to also respect our overwhelm and not just criticize ourselves for it. So yes, sometimes I get overwhelmed and that's okay. Sometimes I need to withdraw and kind of put a little bit the shell around myself in order to protect myself and then we, we take that into account as well. And then there is also the part of you that is aware of all the sensations I mentioned. Like there there's some capacity to witness your inner space. You can witness what's happening in your body and your emotions. So there's awareness too. Right now, a part of me is able to witness that I feel my body. I'm aware that I feel my body. There is awareness. 
Mandara sensations. And then so within that centering, within connecting to yourself, let's have a look how, how are you in relationship to the experiences in your, your life, in your community, in your culture, globally. What creates certainty? What creates resilience for you? What's your agency? What's your level of community you have that feels nourishing and supportive? And on the other hand, what's your what are the triggers that come up? What's the uncertainty? And when you get triggered, do you go more into activation, strong emotions, a lot of stress? Do you become more kind of indifferent, distant, numb, overwhelmed? Or both at times? Are you going more into fight mode, like more outgoing, more trying to bring more overpowering action into the world, or more into flight mode, like retracting turning away from And what kind of inner practices do you have to work with that? Is that something that you continuously examine, bring awareness to, also make space for like a more non-judgmental, compassionate space? You sometimes lose yourself in those triggers or try to shut them down and just continue with your life. What's your mechanism? 
you isolate more, be more alone with it. Do you go into relationships with it? And then you can also, before we start with the channeling, look a bit, what creates the most uncertainty for you right now in your life, given the current local and global situation, what's What are the topics that have the most impact on you? And then slowly let your let yourself slowly feel your body again well. See also what's happening in your body as you ask yourself these questions. Also be aware that we are all here, like there are many people inquiring the same questions, but also being part of a community right now. There's a collective presence here. And then let's just um, take a journal or something to write if you have. If not, you can, of course, keep contemplating. But if you have any, if you have something to write, it's good to make yourself some notes for a few minutes. Um, just write down what's, what gives you resilience on the one hand, what gives you strength right now in this world, what are the resourcing aspect aspects what creates uncertainty what are the issues that have most impact on you and how does that impact live in you like what kind of sensations emotions does this bring forth Just write a few more minutes and maybe we'll play some. Music for a few moments. And then we will collect some of the voices. Let's keep self reflecting for a few minutes.
and also notice how much you allow yourself to have the experience come up that's coming up in you when you relate to the current situation in the world. Like, is there interest? Is there curiosity? Is there also an understanding that what comes up in us is part of the evolution? These kind of emotions need to show themselves. This kind of inner experiences need to come up in order to be integrated, to be witnessed, to be digested. We are digesting hundreds of years of unintegrated life experience. When the world's changing externally, the internal experience is part of the movement. When the world changes internally, the external forces are moving too. So what's the yes to uncertainty? What's the yes to grief? What's the yes to sometimes overwhelm? Just in the yes, there is already a beauty. There's a love. There's a dedication. That my humanity is not in the way. It's not a block. It is the way. We're becoming more human is part of the current evolution. So to just to also examine how you look at all the things that the current situation brings forth in you as the change process that's needed. And in the loving attention, there is a beauty. There's a beauty in the love towards my own process. And there's a beauty in the way we hold each other when we go through that detox together. So just let's write maybe one more minute about the how I allow my inner world, how I maybe pathologize how my inner world speaks. And to also let that again be part of the unfolding of the process, but with awareness. Slowly let the reflection process come to an end for now. And we will open the chat for a moment to, if you have three words or a sentence, maybe you can type into the chat what's present in you right now or anything that you think is important in relation to what we 
explore here. So it's just here with some three words, a sentence. Let's keep it essential. But let's get a little bit of the fingerprint, like the collective fingerprint of this moment. Yeah, everybody can also read a bit what other people are writing, like present moment awareness, grief, connectedness, and beauty, change of perception. The earth will live without feeling the grief of the world, lets me feel the flow of life, humility, longing, acceptance. I cry during the meditation. Some deep sadness, deep crying and releasing and the divine safety. Unapologetic about we, numbness, exhaustion, anger. calm, serenity, and empathy. And just keep writing and reading so that we get a bit of a feeling of the collective quality atmosphere in the room. And, and it says you do that to feel that here is a community, we are a community uh, looking at that a collective space. And we want to invite now that um, a few voices uh, can share briefly what's, what's the experience that comes up uh, around global uncertainty. And um, maybe Kosha, you want to guide us a little bit from here? And keep writing if you still feel called to write. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. It's lovely to just feel our collective space somehow softening and deepening. Yeah, so I feel touched in my heart as mm -hmm. we hear. Yeah, and we'd love to hear a few voices. You know, each of us also becomes like an entrance door into the collective body, you know completely unique but also at the same time yeah in resonance with others and it would be wonderful to hear a few of your voices um and we'd love if you could try and keep it essential so deep essential and just really sharing how you're here right now, what is alive in your body, in your emotions, what comes up in you as we do this practice together. And in that deep knowing that whatever is truly happening in you, the more precisely you can be with it and we're allowed to be with it with you. Um, 
Yeah, the more true we become to what really is, and that's the place from where the next movement appears. So Digo is in the background, and we'll invite you to come online and turn your video on. Even if you're invited to come online, we might not be able to hear everybody's voices. But we'd love to have a few people just join Thomas and me here on the screen. And Thomas will might step into conversation with you. So Diga, let us know when we're ready. When we and just to also um, technically you can raise your hand by uh, to join and participate you can raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand button found at the bottom of your zoom window so if you're on zoom you can raise your hand and if you don't see that hand it'll be in the more and then you'll find it there and we're getting our hands in so just a moment while that process happens many hands <laughs> and it's it's also going to be good for everybody when 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 we listen to different voices that we know that our bodies resonate with their bodies our emotions resonate with their emotions our minds understand what the minds are saying so to let yourself listen with your whole being and like let's feel into the resonances of our shared space and also like a shared global situation and um and very good uh, thank you and as you already said thomas also to notice that our collective allows us to feel more because we become bigger as part of this collective nervous system Yeah, so Thomas, shall we start? I think we should start, yeah. Let's hear. Uh, so, Marine, is this your name? Yeah, so maybe you start us off and then we go through the circle. Thank you, Thomas. And in the meditation, when you invited us to turn into that resilience, um, I think I felt a spaciousness and I connected that to resilience being supported by making space for my feelings. And when you invited us to tune into the uncertainty, um, I think I felt a fear. <laughs> and later I connected that to maybe a fear of, will I be able to contribute? Will my contribution matter? Will it impact other people um, in a way that they feel um support and then during the journaling i i i thought about these two aspects and realized that maybe their resilience is connected to the uncertainty um by that that space can be made in a communal or collective way where their resilience and uncertainty are not they're not really in contradiction but they're <laughs> They're working towards um, and one thing, yes. Uh, that's really beautiful. I just want to highlight what you just said is that the resilience is also that we can allow ourselves to be scared sometimes and that they're not opposing forces, but they're actually embracing each other. And I think that softening, that's a beautiful quality that you described, that you can have both. And, and that's also part of the resilience. So lovely that you brought this. Yeah, thank you. It's great. Um, yeah, Christy, do you want to continue? I think. Well, Kirst, oh, sorry, I can. Christy, Christy, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I um, felt so many different things during the meditation, but what I want to share is what came up was this sense of incongruence between the joy and beauty in my own life and in my inner life and then the feelings about what happened in the world and somehow judging that the joy and beauty inside me is wrong 
somehow with what's happening in the world. I feel it, but yet I go in and I feel something else. So that incongruence was something that came up for me in a very big way. It's also, it's beautiful that you can see that like the judgment on the joy, like something is not right with the joy. And then maybe to let that relax a little bit and say, okay, there's joy and there's resource. And there's also something you can give from that place of joy and, and creativity that you carry inside. And, and then to check if, if the other feelings that come with the state of the world can equally maybe reach your heart. That's maybe something to look at. But I think that's great that you can have the joy as a resource when you relate to the world. So thank you for sharing that. I think that's great. Tracy. Yeah, during the meditation, I started to see this um, imagery of me sitting on the porch in what used to be my parents acreage and looking out at the land and feeling the land and just having the realization that like in my family escaping to the land to the farm has been a way to cope like not wanting to go into the city it's too overwhelming and this escape to the land and for me I had kind of a reframe in that moment in that kind of the update happening in me is that I no longer need to escape to the land but I can become the land by growing more ground in myself and becoming that larger, larger, you know, ground and earth and soil and that, that goes with me in each moment, as opposed to it's this kind of fragmented experience where I have to escape to it, rather than I just simply need to begin relating to the ground within me. Yeah, I think you're also speaking to many of us as how do we how do we get grounded in ourselves through healing ourselves so that the land that we feel the land in us is not just outside, it's actually inside and outside is one land. That we are also land, our bodies. I think that's a great reminder for us to find our land inside. Uh, it's, it's strong. So thank you, Asa. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm. Markella? Hello, everyone. Um, I feel like I could talk for hours, but I will attempt to make this concise. Um, so just a bit of background. I've been on a healing journey myself over the last several months and years. Uh, intergenerational trauma because my grandmother is a genocide survivor uh, and my own childhood uh, abuse that happened uh, at the age of nine. So um, I've had, I've, it's, it's been a deep, deep healing journey with a spiritual component. So Thomas, I'm so, um, uh, and everybody uh, at, during the summit, I'm, I'm so uh, touched and grateful for all the work that you have done and for all the learnings that this entails for me. Um, and uh, it, it, I'm already seeing the, the benefits and in one of the talks yesterday, what was spoken was how the trauma becomes the gift. And I see that in my own experience. Um, and I have, uh, I have been able to facilitate some healing in my own family around the intergenerational trauma of the genocide. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I, essentially I, I have a deep belief that our, our, my purpose and many of our purpose is to heal ourselves so we can be in service of the healing of others, among other things through the trauma work, collective trauma uh, type of work that we can be, whether it's in, in being witnesses in this kind of environment or any other of the ways that we help to heal others through our own um, wisdom that we have acquired. So that, that's the background. <laughs> And uh, uh, yeah, which, which is why this, this this summit touches me so, so deeply. Um, and uh, to answer the question, what's coming up for me at this point, and I know that it was spoken about in the Richard Schwartz and Fatima, I forget her last name, talk. It's the fact that as trauma survivors, it, it feels both uh, frightening to feel 
uh, seen and witnessed, but it's also deeply uncomfortable and frightening to feel alone. And that's what came up for me. So I was like, well, <laughs> that, that's an interesting conundrum to be like, uh, both options feel unsafe. So that's sort of, that's what's coming up for me to heal at this point. Um, and the whole wound of unworthiness around feeling uh, you know, that we don't belong and um, all, all those kind of variations. So that, that's what's staring me in the face at this point of my healing. And I find it deeply beautiful, like from everybody that, you know, coming coming in front of a large community and speaking something very personal, first of all, is very courageous. So thank you everybody for starting us off here and opening also the voices and giving us a chance to feel everybody also for you when you speak about where you come from and what you are healing in yourself and that that we we become we are the witnesses that are also you know through you learning if we want to every community everybody can feel your voice and what comes with your voice and we can become participants in your healing journey we can learn from your healing and you inform us also about healing and i think so like every voice here in the community can inform something because i'm sure there are others first that have resonances and secondly when we feel each other in what we go through there's like a powerful alchemy happening that that that, that is a healing space also and I think it's beautiful also what you said that witnessing, like being witnessed is sometimes scary. And if the humanity is very open, like our hearts are open when we witness each other, then the fear is being witnessed too. And the fear becomes like a mutual land. Instead of my fear or your fear, it becomes also our fear. Like we are feeling it together. And I think that's that's the beauty of, of compassionate witnessing. So thank you for sharing also a bit about your background. It's great for us to learn. Yeah, thank you, everybody. This was, as I said, it's courageous to come on and say something personal or deeper about your experience. So thank you for doing this for us. Yeah, I think we have time for a few more voices, isn't it? Yeah, we have a few more we'll bring on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Diami, want to start us off? Gwadze, kaita te opa, the hindo me ku mais di wakats in the shash kahanu meus koashti. Alku me kuishti mesh. My name is Diami, means eagle. I come from um, a tribe in New Mexico, Akuma and Laguna Pueblo. My clans are big road earner and little lizard. And I'm here. Um, uh, I live on the Indian Reservation and uh, I'm in recovery right now. And that's what brought me to this forum today. And there's a lot of healing going on with our people right now. But um, these are my these are my ancestors, my great grandmother, uh, Lucy Lewis, famous potter, and my uncle um, uh, from the tribes. But uh, I was sitting there thinking and doing the meditation, and it's a lot of big words and a lot a lot of things going on. But what I felt when I was when I was listening to you was a lot of peacefulness and. It reminded me of uh, the time I went to uh, Augsburg, uh, to Salzburg, Austria, for the World Uranium Hearing in '92. It was a, it was a, it was a forum of all indigenous peoples talking about the genocide and, and uh, you know stuff from the uranium industry. But I just felt like the whole world was uh, was listening. It's all part of that. And I lived by the, the world's largest open pit uranium mine at one time, so it's like um, you know. And I I just been feeling the love and and feeling. But something my dad always told me, he said, don't be scared to be afraid. And that would, that, that always stuck with me. But <clears throat> I just wanted to say thank you for hearing me. And uh, I just want to say, 
It means be strong and grow old to all everybody in the land. That's all I got to say. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy you, you came on. It's great. Thank you. So Nola. Hello. Oh my goodness. Um, I feel so honored to be here. Thank you. And I just want to say, I just wrote down, don't be scared to be afraid <laughs> from Diami because I love that so much. Oh my God. And that is something that personally in my own healing journey, I had to spend a lot of time learning because I felt terrified to feel my terror. Mm. So Thomas, thank you. And Kosha for this beautiful, um, I don't, I really, I don't have words. I just feel, I feel it in my heart. I feel everyone in my heart. And what came up for me a few days before this forum started, and it really came up during the meditation was, um, I'm in the process of really discovering and healing some very deeply wounded um, inner, an inner infant in myself and an inner toddler. And I'm doing this work through IFS. So you, I just saw your talk with Dick Schwartz and I actually just talked to Dick about this recently on a, a class he was doing about um, healing. And I am, I came to the realization that the degree to which I am able to heal, to be with, discover, be with, and heal that inner infant and toddler in myself is the degree to which I'm able to be with other people in their healing and be in the world and heal the world. And I, I feel very acutely that when I feel shut down with overwhelm because of what I see happening in the world, it's because up till now, I was not able to be with the deep pain and panic and terror that was lodged deep inside me. And since I have found that, that, place and have been able to take my infant self in my heart and be with her and hold her and do this healing process inside. I, I have that freed up energy and calmness and self energy to bring to the world. I feel like I'm repeating myself now, but that's, that's what I'm really feeling acutely that I wish that um, I, I feel like I see it in the world too, that, that when, when we have all of us running around, you know, feeling very um, uncentered and um, chaotic, it's because we're all out here and not enough inside with ourselves. You know, we're running scared because there's no one inside with us. And that needs to be us. It needs to be us inside with ourselves. And then, so that's, that's what I'm experiencing myself. And thank you to everyone. And yeah. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Thank you. And also thank you for speaking to the mutuality of doing our own healing work for us to be able to contribute in a more integrated way to our external work and how they interrelate it. So thank you. It's beautiful. Kara, is this how you, yeah. Um, I, my experience was at first noticing coldness and numbness. And then I got curious what that was protecting and kind of peeking over the edge of that was heaviness and hopelessness despair and that felt so heavy 
it was like it was a sinkhole and was going to drop forever. And so there were a lot of other parts of me that were terrified that they would also get sucked into the sinkhole. If I was able to feel the scale of all the things that were so sad to me and distressing. Um, and then you're coming back to the resource at the end of the meditation and reminding me that there were that everyone was here together. And then as people's faces started to appear uh, on the screen, I started to get that reminder of, oh yeah, like I'm being held in a network mm. or a collection of people that are sharing this care with me. And then that allowed me to stop feeling like I was slipping into the sinkhole of despair and, and remembering that I was held. So that mm. was my... That's also just one comment to underline. You're speaking also to the importance of knowing what's resourcing us. And sometimes when it feels darker or heavy or numb, that we also know how to resource ourselves, that we are able to stay with it in a in a good way. So we're not drowning in it, but yeah, kind of onboarding some of it into our more integrated self. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Every every kind of contribution is also like a like a teaching for us so that's great and uh christiana christiana uh, hi thomas hi kosha thank you for having me hey. uh what i wrote was how do we deal with the trauma of being told daily, you can't do this? Uh, my sister, mother, and I came down with a zoonotic illness and someone who had gone through the same disease said that what worked for her was not soaking her skin, uh, not eating for a week, but just an egg a day, and then to uh, stop drinking water or liquid uh, to dehydrate for a year. And as a neurobehavioral researcher um, who studies uh, circuitry underlying anxiety, my thought was to study the neurogastroenterology of this idea. Um, however, daily I am told uh, that I can't do this and all I can think about are, you know, movers and shakers like, like Greta Thunberg um, and everyone who told her that she couldn't tackle something so large as climate change. So, Thomas, how do we conquer the trauma of being told daily, you can't do this. You can't be that change in the world. And it's very deep, and maybe this can lead us also to maybe some concluding words for the witnessing part. But I think you're speaking to something very powerful. You're speaking to how do we create around ourselves an ecosystem that can help us to become more empowered, where we are where we are interested in each, each other's flourishing and that we need to create together, obviously, but we need to create and also be initiative, like collective holding spaces that can begin to dispel those messages and see, okay, what are actually the, even if it's small steps, what are the small steps that are possible? And especially, I often say, especially when there are crisis moments, it's not about seeing the solution, but it's about seeing the next step. And sometimes to dispel this, like disempowering messages is beginning first of all to have an, a different ecosystem and the second thing is okay what's the next step because climate change is not being solved through like a solution but it's being solved through millions of steps 
and and I think that's what like what what I think is important empowering relationships being interested I often say the if we human rights I believe are composed out of three rights the right to be in life that's sacred the right to flourish like the right to become that we support that we create communities where everybody is interested in everybody's flourishing and the right to belong and and so to create meaningful relationships that really are supportive and where we support each other and i think all the human rights are basically in in that and that's cross that's kind of globally i think important and and so I would say creating relationships that are interested in what's the doable next step and it's a mutual space uh, seems to be seems to have the power to dispel this kind of disempowering voices and step by step I think then also I have seen a lot of inner states change they don't change often overnight but they change step by step and they feel more resourced and when the system is more resourced more power comes up and then new steps show up that are possible and it becomes a positive upward spiral and i think we can create this with each other we can be part of each other's upward spiral and um, so i so thank you for for bringing this because i think for many people this voice is also this disempowering it's not possible we can do it it's like it, it this, we have to dispel this but it's not going to be dispelled through a fight it's dispelled through steps i think and and empowering communities that we build like we have here right now that we really listen to each other that we want to be part of each other's experience and we begin to create a collective coherence together so for now, I think, sorry, I don't, I don't hear you. It's like you're muted. Um, I think you was, you were saying something. Uh, yeah, Christian, maybe. there's your audio again. Let's, let's keep it brief because of our time and then we can, yeah. But if you wanted to say something, Christiana. Just that I hear uh, remembering that change is uh, each individual step and um, uh, that, you know, the fear inside each one of us and the, uh, the voices of disempowerment can be um, worked against by remembering that we're with one another. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you for creating this space. Mm, yeah thank you for speaking and thank you everybody for being so courageous to speak here in front of so many people it's amazing thank you and maybe we just take a moment to feel how it feels to be part of each other's voices and learning and even if we go a few minutes over but uh Kosha, you want to take it from here? Yes, thank you, Thomas. And thank you to all of you who spoke um, such beautiful windows into the collective body. And I especially also want to want to thank you, Diami, for reminding us that your people will be dancing and praying for the world together. And those words of dancing and praying for the world together, somehow I feel as if our global social witnessing practice is part of that or moving into that place of praying for the world together. So just appreciating the voices. And thank you so much, Thomas, for holding this space, for bringing this practice into the world. And we are midway through the summit. So in the coming days, we have so much richness to share with you and there will be at least six talks each day all available for at least 48 hours so a lot of depth 
for you to connect to. And we hope that this is a space of nourishment and inspiration to each of us. If you haven't yet found us, we're on the website collectivetraumasummit.com. And please do also share with your friends, your family, your colleagues, invite them to come. We've over the past years really grown into a global community of people who know more and more and more deeply about the impact and the effects, but also how we can meet collective trauma together. Of course, you can also purchase the package, which means that you have lifelong access to all these conversations, but also all the extra gifts that people have brought. There's also an online course by Thomas on collective trauma integration that you can understanding collective trauma that will become freely available to you. And during the summit, you get a 50% off offer. But the main reason really for purchasing the package is that you support us to keep doing this work, to keep having these conversations and bringing out this information in the world. You make it possible. So support us in this way. Yeah, and I especially want to invite you to also Find your way, if you're interested, to the Pocket Project website, pocketproject.org, where we have global social witnessing events. Our next global social witnessing event will be about trauma and climate change, specifically looking at the wildfires and then the flooding in Greece. So this will be on 9 October, and we often respond to people from the field bringing what is happening in their area of the world to us. So we'll be looking at that, and then the one after that will be on the fires on Maui, Hawaii. So also we want to invite you on 16 October, potential for restoration phases of collective trauma integration. We're starting to a new journey of what we call international labs, which are spaces looking at specific areas of collective trauma, thematic, geographic, and going on a journey for 12 month period. This will be from January to December 2024, but we're starting on the 16th of October with a first introduction to that journey. And then on the 23rd of October, we'll have a free public call with Thomas, where he shares more about his vision for global healing movement that slowly but surely brings more compassion, precision and resolution to the scar tissue of collective trauma that we're all living in. So find out more. All of these events are completely for free and just an offering into the collective field. And we also invite you to join us on Wednesday, October 4th for our closing event with Thomas Hubel to bring this year's summit to completion. But now, and this is really an important part of the call, you know, because as Thomas and we all found this balance between resourcing and then opening up and witnessing and resourcing is so important. So we'll complete the call today with Kim Rosen, a beautiful poet, bringing spoken poetry with music to us just to cohere and settle and ground our nervous systems together. Over to you, Kim. Thank you so much, Kosha and Thomas. I want to continue this powerful and very tender gathering with two poems that I feel in resonance, both with the fierceness of what we're turning towards and the tenderness. Um, the first is a poem by W.S. Merwin, who lived most of his life on Maui. And the second, interwoven, is a poem by Dina Metzger called Song. First poem is called Thanks. The music is by Jamie Sieber and was written for these poems. Listen. 
with the night falling, we are saying thank you. We are stopping on the bridges to bow from the railings and say thank you. We are running out of the glass rooms with our mouths full of food to look at the sky and say thank you. We are standing by the water, thanking it. Standing by the windows, looking out in our directions. Back from a series of hospitals. Back from a mugging. After funerals. We are saying thank you. After the news of the dead, whether or not we knew them. We are saying thank you. Over telephones, we are saying thank you. In doorways and in the backs of cars and in elevators. Remembering wars and the police at the door and the beatings on stairs, we are saying thank you in the banks we are saying thank you in the faces of the officials and the rich and of all who will never change we go on saying thank you thank you with the animals dying around us, taking our feelings, we are saying thank you. With the forests falling faster than the minutes of our lives, we are saying thank you. With the words going out like cells of a brain, with the cities growing over us, we are saying thank you. Faster and faster, with nobody listening, we are saying thank you. We are saying thank you. And waving, dark though it is, There are those who are trying to set fire to the world. We are in danger. There is time only to work slowly. There is no time not to love. There are those who are trying to set fire to the world. We are in danger. There is time only to work slowly. There is no time not to love. Listen. With the night falling, we are saying thank you. We are stopping on the bridges to bow from the railings. We are running out of the glass rooms with our mouths full of food to look at the sky and say thank you. We are standing by the water, thanking it. We are standing by the windows, looking out in our directions, back from a series of hospitals, back from a mugging, after funerals, we are saying thank you. After the news of the dead, whether or not we knew them, we are saying thank you. Over telephones, we are saying thank you. In doorways, in the backs of cars and in elevators, 
remembering wars and the police at the door and the beatings on stairs we are saying thank you in the banks we are saying thank you in the faces of the officials and the rich and of all who will never change we go on saying thank you thank you with the animals dying around us taking our feelings we are saying thank you with the forest falling faster than the minutes of our lives we are saying thank you with the words going out like cells of a brain with the cities growing over us we are saying thank you faster and faster with nobody listening we are saying thank you we are saying thank you and waving dark though it is with the animals dying around us taking our feelings there are those who are trying to set fire to the world we are saying thank you with the forest falling faster than the minutes of our lives there is time only to work slowly there is no time not to love thank you to ws merwin for the poem thanks to dina metzger for the poem song to jamie music jamie music jamie sieber for this extraordinary music thomas kosha and all whose voices we heard today Thank you all for being here for this powerful event.